man who answered just now. Uh, we are going to start our session. Lecture is already is going to be recorded. So friends, in this particular session, we are going to talk about certain issues, social issues and environment. Yesterday and uh, day before yesterday also, we guys have talked about ecosystem and environment. We guys have seen so many aspects of ecosystem and we guys have talked about so many aspects as well as so many things of so different types of ecosystems. Even we guys have seen different types of pyramids also. So in this particular lecture, just a minute, one minute. So in this particular lecture, the topic which we are going to cover is social issues and environment. As we know that we guys are, you know, hampering environment and we guys are creating some disturbances for the environment. And because of this kind of disturbances, uh, environment is damaged. And because of that, certain social issues are emerged, as well as not only, uh, you know, human uh, man-made activities or human activities are responsible for these kind of social issues. At the same time, certain natural calamities are also responsible for this kind of environmental issues. So we are going to talk about what sort of environmental issues are there which are responsible for these kind of uh, issues which are happening and which can be called as social issues. As we know that social issues means that, you know, first of all, I'm going to tell you the meaning of what social issues. What do you mean by social issue and how these issues are also important that we are going to see. Social issues in short, those are the issues which are there in the society. And uh, if those issues are created because of uh, environment, if we damage environment, if we, you know, do not take care of the environment, then such kind of issues are, you know, automatically emerged. So we are going to talk about all those issues one by one. And uh, from upcoming four or five lectures, we will be talking about all these kind of issues. So this is my, you know, talk, topic of uh, discussion. And uh, I hope you will understand what I mean to say. So we are going to start certain, uh, you know, lect certain lectures we are going to have on this particular topic. So before going to start, let me ask you a few questions and then I'll start my session. Uh, do you know something about social issues which are there in the environment or the issues which are created because of the environmental damages? So what do you think? What are the social issues as far as environment is concerned? Any idea do you have? If you know any sort of issue which is there because of the environment, then please let me know so that, uh, you know, uh, I can uh, go for that. So come on, do you know any issue which is related to environment? If no, there is no question, there is no worry. I'm here to tell you and uh, I will talk about that one also. So <clears throat> we are going to, I'm going to share my, share my screen and from that I'll show you what are the issues which are related to certain topics. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. So I'm going to talk about social issues in environment. This is the topic of discussion, my dear friends. So friends, today we are talking about social issues and environment. As I told you, environment and social issues all are closely related and we cannot, you know, just a minute, I'll stop my camera so that, uh, okay. Okay. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Okay. So in this particular session, we are going to talk about this particular aspect, this particular topic. And the topic is very interesting, by the way, because we all are suffering from all these issues, all these topics, all this information. And this is what this particular topic has been taken for your syllabus. So in this topic, we are going to understand, uh, as I told you at the beginning of my session, we guys have created, we people have created certain damages to the environment. Even not only we have created, even nature also has created some uh, issues 
those in the form of natural calamities tela apan naisargik apatti manto like flood like you know um, heavy rainfall so many natural calamity earthquake so many natural calamities are there and because of those natural calamities certain environmental issues as well as social issues are there so how those social issues and environment are correlated that also we are going to discuss in this particular session so before starting i asked uh, starting my session i asked you one session one question and that question was related to do you know any social issue which is having environmental connection so that was the question but nobody has answered but i am going to tell you there are certain issues there are so many issues which are directly or indirectly related to environment and uh, how those are correlated how those are interlinked how those are interconnected that also we are going to discuss in this particular session so there are so many things if we visit uh, you know i think you guys are you know very much uh, mature you can understand whatever you see around us whatever i we people tell us tell you that you also understand so see uh, nowadays one thing is happening and that is also you know prominent issue as far as social issues uh, in environment is concerned and nowadays what what is going to happen or what is happening let me tell you most of the people those who resides in uh, rural areas they wanted to reside in urban areas they want to shift themselves in urban areas they want to uh, stay in urban area they want to reside in urban area there are so many reasons and because of this particular one urbanization is increasing shahrikaran khup vadte people wants to stay in city not in villages so there are so many reasons um, be, uh, behind not staying in uh, villages and number of reasons are there and because of those reasons people they want to shift themselves in metro cities like you know uh, means wherever it is like baramati mumbai pune or any other metro city they want to shift themselves there are a number of reasons behind that the first reason is what there is no employment as such at their native place and because of their employment they want to shift themselves in urban area because in urban area there is an employment anyhow they get an employment and they can you know uh, run their family they can adjust their family they can uh, do with their family that is the issue there are so many reasons behind urbanization also but urbanization is the main issue as far as environment is concerned people they are residing then uh, you we can see when we go to metro cities like mumbai and pune we can see slum areas are increasing day by day that is called as in marathi we call it uh, dhapad patti so slum areas are also increasing if you take an example of pune in pune there is one particular area which is called as janta vasahat so that is the biggest slum in pune even even we when we go to mumbai in mumbai also that is dharavi dharavi is the biggest slum area and we guys have seen what was the situation in dharavi uh, when covid 19 was you know strongly affected dharavi so n number of issues are there and uh, when such kind of slum areas increasing day by day it will definitely cause the environment so there are so many uh, social issues which we are discussing in today's session and uh, that is the main agenda so when i'll go with this particular topic i will ask some questions and you guys have to answer those questions one by one so this is the point of discussion that i wanted to tell you i hope uh, you guys have understood what i mean to say so friends in this particular lecture we will be talking about different aspects different aspects of uh, uh, social issues of uh, social issues and environment so starting with this without wasting your time so what do you mean by social issue how it is uh, there why it is there those i have noted down here so i'm going to start i'm going to explain each and every aspect one by one so starting with the introduction we are going to understand what is a social issue and how it is interlinked how it is interconnected with uh, what do we call it environment in a detail manner that we are going to see so this see the first one we live in the natural as well as social world see this is the fact with that we cannot deny here we stay in a natural environment we stay in a social environment also because human beings are the social animals as we know that we all are the social animals and we stay in a natural as well as social world or social world it means what 
see we cannot live without the society we cannot live without the nature can you imagine yourself without the nature no we cannot imagine ourselves without the nature can you imagine yourself without the society no because you have to go out you have to talk with someone or you have to buy something from someone else you have to visit your college you have to attend your lectures so when you go out when you step out from your family step out from your house the society is there and you are the part and parcel of that society so nature and social world is not differ from you you are the part and parcel of nature nature means environment and you are the part and parcel of world that is called as social world so you are the part of parcel of that so you have to take care of both things now moving on to the next one development cannot be of only the rich nor it means only high living standards see development development means what whatever things are happening around us so it is not only with the rich people it is only with everyone else see and if you look at the standard of living in cities like uh, metro cities or any sort of city whether it is metro or non metro so standard of living is increasing day by day people are trying to live their life in a different manner people are expecting their life should be high profile life so development is taking place and because of the development certain things are done wrong with the uh, wrong with the environment wrong with the society and because of that this kind of issues are coming out this kind of coming we issues we guys are facing and this is what the standard of living and uh, development both things are little bit you know responsible for environmental hazards and natural hazards so moving on to the next one that is also not just economic development so not only economic development is taking place development is taking place in the all the fields of uh, society it is a financial development it is an economic development it is a what we call it personal development then infrastructural development are taking place then uh, different types of development are taking place and when development are taking place we are little bit damaging the earth we are little bit damaging the nature we are little bit damaging the environment see if we want to go for uh, construction of dams if we want to construct a house also for example we need to go for certain sort of damage of the nature if we want to develop houses then what happens we need to cut the trees we need to Uh, construct the houses we need to construct the roads and so on so whenever we go we go for construction of roads whenever we go for construction of uh, houses automatically we damage the society we damage the environment and because of this kind of certain damages that we make with the environment automatically certain social issues are coming out certain certain social certain social issues are emerging and that we need to manage here then it has to be a holistic approach and uh, as they have said that approach should be holistic but approach is not holistic people they don't care at the time of their own suppose you are constructing your home and uh, at that time you need to take care of everything but we do not take we think about ourselves we will will get uh, selfish at that particular moment so approach should be holistic that we want to say here social aspects development and environment have a strong edge so see there is a strong relation all these things are totally interconnected totally interlinked how because your social aspects and developments are totally dependent upon depend upon the environment if you take care of the environment then you need to take care of the development if you take care of the social aspects you need to take care of the environment so these three aspects social aspects development and environment are closely related and whenever you want to go for you need to take care of these aspects and if you do not take care of these aspects automatically one day it will be um, it will be a hazardous thing so whenever we want to go for that we can have to take care of certain things our approach should be holistic and if our approach is not holistic then we will we will definitely damage the environment and uh, after damaging the environment definitely certain social issues will emerge certain social issues will come out and after that we need to deal with those aspects so this is what this one is a sort of introduction about uh, you know social issues and environment now if you look at this and from this we can understand from sus- unsustainable unsustainable to sustainable we are going to understand what is sustainable and what is unsustainable 
and this is what i have taken this slide to explain you unsustainable means what which is not long lasting long lasting and sustainable means what which is long lasting so see actually things were not unsustainable now we have to make them sustainable it means what things were not long long, long lasting now we are going to make them long lasting so see we have to sustain i think we guys have gone through this covid 19 phase most of the business organization they have sustained themselves in this particular situation also but there are so many uh, organizations they have not sustained they have unsustained their business because of n number of reasons so here we are going to understand the concept of unsustainable to sustainable what is that g h bernard sorry brunt plant director of world health organization talked about this meeting the needs of present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs so here they have been talked about needs of society needs of generation needs of future generation and when we can fulfill the needs of future generation when we sustain our resources listen if we are able to sustain our resources for the future generation then only they will get those resources yesterday only i told you we need to take care of we need to preserve we need to protect various types of resources for the future generation otherwise future generation generation will blame us of not sustaining or not protecting or not preserving these kind of resources for themselves so what are those there are certain social things there are certain you know economical aspects there are certain uh, environmental aspects which are required to be sustained and if we uh, are able to sustain them definitely the future generation will get the benefit of those you know resources so this is what i am what i am going to tell you if you do not want any sort of social issue in future as far as environment is concerned we need to go for this particular funda this particular equation and what is that equation equation is very simple unsustainable to sustainable mhanje kay long lasting chain nahi te tumhala long lasting banwavan lage you guys have to take care of human whatever sort of resources we have we have natural resources we have human resources we have economic resources we have environmental resources we have some social resources so we guys have to take care of all these resources we have to make them sustainable and if we do so definitely future generation will take the benefit of all those things even future generation will also think about preservation protection and uh, sustainability of these resources for their another generation so this is what this one is a funda this one is the equation this one is the mantra of unsustainable to sustainable i hope you guys have understood then moving to the next one if you look at the current status if you look at the current status of social issues which are discussed at international level social issues which are discussed at international level those we have taken here and uh, from those uh, we can understand what sort of discussion is taking place at international level so in 1992 there is one summit which was uh, happened and that summit was regarding environment and development so that was an earth summit in rio de janeiro in 1992 that was an united nations conference united nations means what un said uncad so that was the conference conducted by united nations and the topic was what environment and development now everybody is talking about environment everybody has understood the importance of environment and every country is trying to you know take care of environmental issues they are taking some measures to protect the environment so similarly the first earth summit earth summit uh, took place in 1992 at rio de janeiro and uh, that was related to environment and development similarly uh, in that particular meeting 21 agendas or 21 subjects were proposed and they discussed 21 subjects in that particular summit then everyone talks and walks sustainability and in that particular summit whatever summit is taking place in 1992 or took place in 
everybody or every country talked about sustainability because they want to sustain their natural resources and the environment and the last many programs have been initiated so in that particular summit which was taking place in 1992 uh, un or united nations and during that conference so many programs were initiated so, so many programs were launched so many programs were introduced for the protection of what for the protection of environment and environmental developments so that was the summit and uh, people are taking care of environment people are serious about environment even we all are also a um, little bit serious about this kind of environmental issues or social issues so this one was the first step which was taken by the entire world for the protection of environment i hope you were understood moving on to the next one and we are going to see key aspects of sustainable development listen now we are going to talk about key aspects of sustainable development see there are certain key aspects and those key aspects we are discussing here if we want to go for sustainable development if we want sustainable development in terms of um, <clears throat> environment then we have some key aspects and those key aspects we have taken here we are going to talk about the first one that is intergenerational equity so we are going to talk about the first one intergenerational equity so so here we are going to talk about intergenerational equity means what for every generation it should be equal so how we can make it equal so there are some points that uh, they have given and accordingly we are going to talk about one by one the first one if we want to go for intergenerational equity certain things we need to uh, acquire certain things we need to apply then only that intergenerational equity is possible otherwise this kind of intergenerational equity is not at all possible if you look at the first one just a minute hello hello this one so i was talking about intergenerational equity and uh, how this can be maintained how this can be achieved it can be achieved or it can be maintained when we apply something so what can be applied if we apply from the bottom of heart if we apply at our own level then this is possible what which is possible intergenerational equity is possible if we apply below mentioned points points in our day to day life stop overuse what happen you know we go for over using of natural resources in our day to day life what we do we use or we go for over using natural resources for example water if you take an example of drinking water if i want to drink only half of the glass of water i take full glass i drink only half of the glass and remaining half of the glass i throw away or throw in the basin right this is happening so if we stop over using the water or any sort of natural resources then we can go for sustainability otherwise sustainability is not possible so another example see second example is what over using of land people are just selfish people are very you know what do we call it i'm not getting that word for uh, which is in marathi havas le hai na havas people are not satisfied with one house they want to construct two three houses people are not satisfied with one car they are they want to buy four five four five cars it means what we are doing we are using natural resources we are doing over use uses of natural resources if i am having four cars then i need to go for more petrol if i am having two houses then again i have to go for uh, more uh, acquisition of land and all so people are very uh curious people are very selfish they are thinking about themselves at the same same time they are not talking about the environment and if you do so sustainable development is not possible remember the next one reduce impacts if we want to reduce the impact then we need to take care of certain things if you do not want uh, you know um, polluted water then stop uh, uh, you know dro uh, uh, stop dropping uh, industry water into the rivers or into the dams and if we do so definitely we can reduce the impacts of this one and this reduced impact is useful for sustainable development then maintain ecological balance if we want to maintain ecological balance i think yesterday only we have seen ecosystem we have seen ecological pyramids also 
So if we want to maintain ecological balance, or if we want to maintain ecological balances, then this kind of sustainable development is possible. And if we do not maintain ecological balances, then sustainable development is not at all possible, remember. So this is the main pandas that I'm talking about. Then hand over a safe, healthy and resourceful, resourceful environment to our future generation. See, it's, it's our duty to hand over. As I told you, as our forefathers, they have given a safe and healthy, resourceful environment to all of us. So similar sort of duty is also there with us to hand over this safe, healthy and resourceful environment to our future generation. Remember, and if we do so, definitely they will also do the same thing. If we give hazardous environment to our upcoming generation, that will be most dangerous. So this is what we need to take care of this kind of development and that is possible in case of sustainable development if we want to go for sustainable development if we want to go for intergenerational equity then we need to follow these equations these pandas these mantras to make it clear then intra generational equity understand the meaning between intergenerational and intra inter means what two different intra means what within the same now, if we want to go for intra-generational equity, minimize the gap between and within nations. So see, what is to be done if we want to go for intra-generational equity, minimize the gap between and within nations. So whatever is the gap, which is there between the nations and within the nations that can be minimized. So as far as environmental sustainable development is concerned, so whatever sort of gap is there, between the nations and within the nations that can be minimized then support economic growth of proper countries uh, sorry poorer countries extremely sorry support economic growth of poorer countries so see uh, in our world there are certain countries which are developed countries there are certain countries which are under the category of uh, underdeveloped countries or developing countries and there are some countries which are not developed countries so whatever poorer countries are there we need to support them means entire nation entire world has to support them for their uh, you know growth and if we do so definitely they will also improve themselves and they can also protect the environment next one provide technological help nowadays we all are living in the field of technology so we need to take care of the technology and we need to provide help to certain countries to provide the health or uh, technological health that is also important so here we have seen key aspects of sustainable development and uh, that is the most important aspect as far as environmental development is concerned i hope you guys have understood are you listening or not let, let me know so may i can yes sir okay moving on to the next one and there we are going to talk about majors for sustainable development if we want to go for sustainable development, what sort of measures can be taken? The Tumala sustainable development character content measures get laid by just just wait and drink water. Okay. So if we want to go for sustainable development as far as environment is concerned, so there are certain measures that we can take. And if we take certain measures, definitely sustainable development of environment is possible. So what are those uh, measures which are useful to apply, if, which are useful for sustainable development, those we are going through. If you look at the first one, what they have given, using appropriate technology, concept of design with nature. So see, if we want to go for sustainable development of environment, there is one appropriate technology we can apply we can use we can you know materialize one technology which is called as uh, appropriate technology and the name of the technology is what concept of you design with nature so whatever is the nature see we are not here concept of design with nature is very interesting how it is suppose if you want to construct a home for yourself so construct a home which will not hazard, which will not create any bad impact or which will not be hazardous with the nature. 
it means what if you construct a home but there is no bad impact on the nature so that way you guys have to design and this is what this concept is named like this concept of design with nature whatever you want to do suppose you want to construct a road so you construct a road which will not hamper the nature which will not create any dangerous things for the nature and if you do so this kind of activities that we do that can be called about design with nature so we are designing everything according to the nature and why we are taking care of the nature because we don't want to hamper the nature and if we do not hamper the nature nature will give you so many things i think we guys have seen one example last year in 2020 uh, government uh, you know declared lockdown in the month of march and from the month of march to june there were no vehicles on the roads only few vehicles there were on the roads and because of that pollution was stopped air pollution was stopped and we have seen the benefit of that in the month of june we got huge amount of rain everywhere not in certain part of the country or certain part of maharashtra everywhere we saw that so whatever if we do something good automatically nature will give something good so this is the concept of design with nature is very interesting so whatever you want to do that should, that can be done according to the nature and if you take care of the nature before doing anything else it is called your design with the nature then 3 r approach this is very popular huh? 3 r approach and this 3 r approach is very interesting what are those 3 r konte the 3 r those 3 r's are minimization of resources resource use use again and process to get a new product from same material so what is that reuse recycle and reproduce so these are the three r's again i am going to show you in a very detailed manner so reuse resource use use again and recycle so these are the three one then promoting environmental awareness and education now there's government is also taking huge efforts to promote environmental education and creating awareness among the society members everywhere they are doing this and they are trying to create the environmental awareness even in our college also we do take care of this particular things and from that we can understand what sort of environmental education we are providing to them so here as far as uh, promoting environmental education is concerned and awareness is concerned this is what your subject is also named like this environmental awareness so universities and university grant commissions and colleges are also taking efforts to promote environmental awareness among you guys also because you are in degree now and if we create awareness amongst yourself definitely you can also pass the same message to your youngsters and this is what this kind of environmental awareness programs and education is provided last one carrying capacity that is supporting and assimilative so whatever is the carrying capacity that should be supportive and assimilative and if we take all these measures definitely these measures will be helpful for sustainable development as such i hope you guys have understood whatever i told you in this particular session after that we are going to talk about indian scenario what sort of indian scenario is there what sort of scenario is there in our country as far as environmental sustainability is concerned and uh, just we are going to see what sort of situation is there in our country as far as um, indian sustainability is concerned and environment protection is concerned if we take a look on india if we take a look on india we can understand some points or we can come up with certain amount of certain points and what are those tremendous population no doubt in india we have tremendous population if you look at the world world's population or if you look at the ranking world ranking in population china is the first one and we are at second place so when we compare our population with other countries definitely they are very small in population there are certain countries and the population is very low if you take an example i think whatever population we have in maharashtra those is not there in certain countries lesser than uh, the same population is there in certain countries of the world so this is what when we think about the indian scenario we may come up with certain points and those points are population is very much you know uh, high tremendous population we have because in india 
population explosion is taken place tremendous natural diversity this one is the plus point by the way first one was minus point but this point if you look at the second point that is our plus point tremendous natural diversity we have as i told you whenever visit whenever you visit any state of our country you can see diversity if you go to calcutta diversity is there if you go to if you come to maharashtra and the diversity is different natural diversity is different if you go to jammu and kashmir definitely natural diversity is different if you go to seven sisters in assam meghalaya manipur you can see different uh, sort of natural diversity so this one is a plus point and this kind of diversity is not there in other countries that we have so this diversity is very much important and we can make a uh, benefit of we can make certain benefits from this natural diversity if we take care in the right manner then hence make planning sustainably all the more important but complex no doubt we have this plus point of having tremendous natural diversity this one is a good point but at the same time when we go for planning of environmental sustainability it will become complex because according to the situation according to the nature of that particular state of india we have to make a separate plan we cannot make one plan for entire india according to the state according to the situation according to the nature diversity we can have to make the different plans and that is the complex one next one uh, national council of environmental planning and coordination set up in 1972 government has taken one initiative 1972 and uh, government has means central government has made one particular council which is called as national council of environmental planning and coordination and that uh, particular council was set up in 1972 for the purpose of environmental planning and coordination and the last one that is very much important ministry of environment and forest set up so similarly for the purpose of protecting forest in india ministry of environment and uh, forest is set up by the central government in 1985 so by setting up this kind of councils and ministries government is trying to con uh, trying to protect the environment trying to take care of the environment trying to preserve the environment and this is what this kind of initiative initiatives are taken place or took place this is what uh, i wanted to tell you about in the indian scenario and from looking at this particular slide you might have understood what sort of scenario we have if we look at this kind of scenario the only the first point is little bit you know serious and we need to take care of that we need to think about it that is tremendous population as in our country population is increasing day by day so if we think about that definitely we can proceed and can sustain our environment in a very positive manner so that is the only thing which is expected through this kind of environmental awareness programs that we are organizing even government is also organizing for you guys now the social issues which we are going to discuss i am coming to the social issues whatever we guys have seen earlier that was just a background and because of that we can say these are the social issues issues which are we which we all are facing so here just i have noted down the social issues just and we are going to see all these social issues one by one in upcoming lectures so what are the names of those social issues i will tell you urban problems related to energy in urban areas energy is the most important problem electricity is the most important problem that everyone is facing then water conservation water conservation is the big issue whatever water we get from uh, rain or rainfall we do not conserve that and that is the main issue then resettlement and rehabilitation of issues there are certain resettlement and rehabilitation issues i will talk about this in a bit little manner in the coming lectures then environmental ethics are there then climate change i think i will give you one example at the time of climate change global warming and uh, i think i have seen one uh, you know i have experienced me sotan bo getla mag charoda made climate change sir. so you will also uh, get experienced from that global warming then acid rain and ozone layer depletion nuclear accidents and uh, hollow cost wasteland reclamation and consumerism and waste products so these are the things which we are going to see as social issues in upcoming lectures so time is over i stop here and i'll get back for my third lecture at uh, 12:42 120 so in that session we'll start from this particular point onwards so i'll continue with uh, this slide in my second lecture i stop my presentation here and i'll get back to my home screen
I hope you all are enjoyed my session and uh, you have really enjoyed. So if you have any query as such, you can ask me your query, otherwise I'll stop here. Is there any query?